All right. Uh, well, I am really excited about this next speaker because I got to see him in rehearsal yesterday. And when you talk about NFV and what a telco can do that's really out there driving innovation with OpenStack, it's mind-blowing. And I hope you enjoy it as much as I did when I got a little preview yesterday. So I'd like to bring out Kang Wan Lee, Senior Vice President of R&D at SK Telecom. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a, such an honor to be here. Uh, my name is Kang Wan Lee from SK Telecom. Um, at SKT, I'm leading the development of uh, software-defined uh, technologies, including SDN and software-defined data center. Um, as you may already know, Korea is one of the most connected countries in the world with the fastest uh, internet speed and the highest LTE penetration ratio. In Korea, SKT is the number one mobile service provider with 50% market share. By the way, SK doesn't stand for South Korea. I challenge you to guess what it stands for. Um, if you have ever visited Korea, uh, Korea has really excellent infrastructure in terms of network connectivity. You can get really good uh, bandwidth and service from anywhere you go, uh, uh, no matter which part of the country. And SKT has been at the forefront of developing and commercializing the, the most uh, innovative uh, wireless technologies. For instance, uh, in the 90s, we were the first in the world to commercialize the CDMA technology. Uh, then we were the first to commercialize the 3G technology called 1X video. Uh, more recently, uh, we were the first to deploy 4G LTE advanced networks. Now, uh, we have a network infrastructure that can deliver 300 megabps over the air. Currently, uh, our focus is uh, to develop the next uh, generation mobile network technology called 5G network. We envision that 5G network will be an awesome technology. It will provide 100 to 1,000 times higher speed than the current 4G network hundred to thousand times. And also it is expected that the latency will be about 10 times shorter than that of 4G network while connecting more number of devices in a given area. Traditionally, mobile network has been used for voice and data. More recently, they are used for video streaming, online gaming, social networks. In the future, we envision that they will be used for much more rich, immersive media, social interactions, and the variety of new types of services called Internet of Things. Rich media can open up new services for work and fun. For instance, 360 degree uh, video streaming is already possible with full HD resolution. Now, combine this with the virtual reality technologies and the tactile interface. Now, we have a new definition of media and entertainment. And this is wherever you go, uh, no matter where you are. To realize a 5G network, developing a new wireless technology that can achieve extremely high speed and efficient spectrum usage is critical. But that is not the whole story. It is believed that 5G network will be much more flexible and adaptable. What do we mean by that? Let's think of IoT. Many people are talking about Internet of Things, and uh, we, have, we are yet to see what the killer apps will be in the IoT space. But one thing is for sure, that IoT is a really broad concept. They can range from a very simple device like smartwatches to a much more complex and mission critical system in medical, industrial, and public safety domains. Obviously, these different types of network devices will require very different types of net quality of service from the network. So one way to realize and support these different types of IoT devices is to use technology called network slicing. Using network slicing, we can carve out 
a virtual network slice that can satisfy specific requirements for a specific application. For example, Google Nest type of devices, smart thermostats, they will require relatively low bandwidth connectivity with periodic data transfer. More immense, uh, immersive applications like VRs will require much higher bandwidth with continuous connectivity. But now consider connected cars. They need fast response from the network with extremely low latency and very high reliability. So all these different devices need to be supported from the same network infrastructure. And network slicing is based on the technology called software-defined networking and the network function virtualization. So in this respect, virtualization of the network infrastructure is a key requirement for the 5G network. My team at SKT has been developing a software-defined infrastructure for 5G. We call this an all-IT network infrastructure. In the past, mobile network and the IT infrastructure in telcos have been relatively separate. Mobile network part uh, did the major head lift, heavy lifting for trans, transmitting voice and data. IT infrastructure has played a more of a support role for customer care and billing. In 5G or IT network, we envision the access and core networks will also run on top of the IT infrastructure, which is the software-defined data center. Without virtualization, building and operating a network that can support a variety of applications with varying characteristics will take tremendous effort, from buying and installing special hardware equipment to manually configuring network policies and rules. With software-defined networking, instead we can program the network to handle different types of traffic. We can systematically set the policies and rules instead of putting ad hoc configurations. We can also provision and scale the network as new demand arrives on the fly. With no doubt, it is critical that we build our all IT network infrastructure on top of a solid infrastructure technology. However, we realize that no vendor can deliver a solution that is 100% fitting to our needs, nor can we wait until all the features that we require become commercially available. Thus, we have decided to invest in an open technology, and we have chose OpenStack as our infrastructure solution because of its solid track record, growing community, and the great ecosystem. Our first application of OpenStack-based technology has been applied to our network operation center in Bundang, nearby Seoul. We have developed a multi-cloud data center management system that we call Tron OS to manage servers in our NOC. This, is, this picture just uh, shows the portion of our NOC. We have many NOCs in, our, uh, in the entire country, and this is a central location of all the network information comes to. We have also employed OpenStack in our private cloud that is used for developing new services and applications. And this is a big change from our previous version of private cloud which was built on top of specific uh, vendor-specific solutions. In the SDN space, we are engaged with the ON Lab uh, at Stanford University. The, uh, one of the projects that ON Lab is carrying is called ONOS, Open Network Operating System. And the goal of this project is to develop a carrier-grade SDN controller. In the ONOS project, we are contributing our SONA technology, Simplified Overlay Network Architecture, as the core component. And this is the, going to be the component to connect the SDN controller that ONOS develops and with the OpenStack. And this will lay a ground for building an infrastructure to create virtual network slices. Managing software-defined networks can be a challenge uh, due to the complex, possibly complex overlay structures. 
To help network administrators, we are developing a 3D-based network administration console. It can visualize complex structures of virtual networks in a more intuitive way than a traditional network dashboard can. Well, what's more is that network administrators can take actions such as stopping suspicious traffic or load balancing congested links on the same dashboard as they discover problems. This has become possible by leveraging the SDN technology, by dynamically injecting new rules to the network switches and routers. These are just a few early examples how OpenStack and software-defined technologies will be used in the next generation mobile networks. They will comprise fundamental building blocks of 5G network in addition to the necessary technology breakthroughs in wireless space. The transition will require a lot of work, and it will not be an overnight change, but we have embarked on a journey toward implementing software-defined 5G network. I hope that I have convinced you that OpenStack is an important technology for the telcos, not just the OTT providers and traditional business, to prepare for their future. Uh, we have a session to describe our Tron operating system uh, in the morning uh, after the keynote. So if you want to learn more, you can come to our session in Matsuba room on the second floor. Thank you. All right, Dr. Lee, you have convinced me that I want 5G <laughs> okay. powered by OpenStack. So when can I have it? Um, we, have a, we have a roadmap to develop 5G networks, and um, probably the, the pilots will be available by 2018. All right. And we have a plan to commercialize the first 5G network by 2020. All right, well, that's pretty exciting. So the only last question I have for you, you said SK Telecom, you're from South Korea, so it's pretty clear what it stands for, right? Or am I confused? Well, uh, many people just uh, assume, and sometimes they are very nice to, uh, they, they're trying to be nice and uh, introduce me that I'm from South Korea Telecom, and uh, SK actually doesn't stand for that. Uh -oh. SK Am I one of those people that uh, does that? I think you are one of those 90% of the people. <laughs> uh, so SK comes from uh, the, the group's old name called Sunyoung, but uh, we don't go by that. Now we are just part of the SK group, so SK is the, come from the old name of the group. Okay, well, thank you so much. Okay. Can't wait to, for this uh, OpenStack-powered future to arrive uh, from SKT. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that as much as I did. Um, I just love to geek out on that stuff. A thousand times faster. I mean, there must be something we can do with that, right? <laughs>